April Tramp, we're going to do something really interesting today. And first we're going to build us a little fire. I'm just going to put some alcohol in a little watch glass. We're going to light it. And here's a steel rod. Just take that and hold it over that fire and set it on fire. I don't think it's going to burn. Well, let's find out. So you were right. Nothing's happening, right? About the most, un most uninteresting science experiment ever. But the thing about it, now we know it does get hot, right? Now obviously yes. you wouldn't want to take it out and grab the other end right now. But the interesting thing is, you know, we think of steel as, just like you said, it won't burn. But do you think there's a way we can make steel burn? Probably since I suggested it, right? And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at a couple ways we can actually make iron, the same material that this bar is made out of. We're going to catch it on fire and burn it. And if you just take that and set it in the sink, it's kind of hot at the end, so be careful with it. But we're going to actually have some burning iron today, which is something you probably aren't used to seeing. And to do that, we're going to make our fire again. Just add a little alcohol. And this time, instead of using an iron bar or a steel bar, we're going to use iron. But we're going to use, well, even smaller than that, we're going to use iron powder. And we can open it up. It looks just... It sort of looks like iron fibers. It does. It's just really, really small, right? Tiny pieces. So we're going to drop a little bit of that in. And you want to light that? Sure. You want to light it here. All right. And we're just going to sprinkle a little bit over there and just watch what happens as the iron hits the fire. What do we see happening? It's making like sparks. Yeah, it's kind of burning the iron, right? And do you have any idea why this would be able to burn a little bit, but the bar wouldn't? Because, uh, maybe because it's smaller? Yeah, it is. It's, it's the tiny pieces because we know that a fire needs fuel. We know that a fire needs heat. But what's the other thing that a fire needs that's all in the room around us? Gas. Well, a certain type of gas. It needs oxygen, right? And if you have an iron bar, you can't really get a lot of fire to that iron. You know, it's like if you take a giant wooden log and just throw it on your campfire and try to light that up. It's not going to light, right? Yeah. But you, you take some leaves, you take some small twigs, and you burn those first to get a fire going. So it's all about being able to get the oxygen to the fuel so that it can burn. Um, just like with wood, it's the same concept here. And as this burns, it's actually making a chemical change that you can't necessarily see happening. But it's changing this, it's oxidizing it, making a compound called iron oxide. So we're ending up, just like when you burn a log, it makes carbon and some other gases that are released. Uh, when the iron burns, it also makes a chemical change. But we're going to look at one more way that we can make iron burn. And this time we're not going to use a powder. We're going to use this right here. Have you ever still wool? Yeah, you've seen that before, I'm sure. And we're going to take this, and I'm going to let you hold it. Now, just don't hold it close to you. You want to kind of hold it out over the tile there. And I'll let you take that up. And if you'll pass me the lighter, we're going to light the end of it. Hold it, hold it up about right here. All right, and, and before we do this, let's put our goggles on too. Just, uh, this, this might have some sparks coming off of it, so we'll go ahead and get some goggles. And then we're going to light steel wool. And again, you know, steel wool is basically these really fine strands of iron or steel. And because, again, you've got lots of air that's able to get around those, let's see if we can make that burn a little bit. Now, what I want you to do, Trent, just kind of swing it back and forth just a little bit, not real hard. But as you swing it around, that's going to even get more air to that fire, and you can see it's causing it to burn more brightly. So again, with these fine strands of steel, we're able to make steel, make iron, make a metal that wouldn't normally burn, catch on fire, combust, oxidize, and undergo a chemical change through that process. So pretty cool chemical reaction, huh?